I've been ordering no-till since 78. Uh, I got quite familiar with the system. Found out it wasn't the equipment, it was the agronomy. Found out it was the soils. I found out it's the soil health. They were in the for about the last 15 years. Uh, when we were able to talk to me, I said, I'm going to talk on what cover crops can do for you. Not, again, not to tell you what to do, but to tell you what to think about before you decide what to do. Then I saw in the program it says cover crops to mitigate tillage or something. I gave some of that this morning in my talk, but I'll give some of that again now. When we start thinking about cover crops, one of the first things you got to think about is what are you trying to accomplish? I had the opportunity to go down to Brazil for 18 days. Wonderful down there, traveling around. Almost every acre there is cover crops. That was to mitigate what they'd done with tillage. They did a lot of rainfall, they did a lot of intensive tillage, they had huge runoff and erosion events, huge problems everywhere. They put up cover crops to protect that soil. And after they started doing that, they found out they were building soil and put the whole carbon on the system. And so we started thinking about what we're doing. Erosion protection, erosion reduction. The hills in northeast Nebraska, this is about a 15% slope. And uh, so my cover crop there sprayed up before I planted the corn. This is the concentrated flow area down that hillside after a five inch rain that occurred overnight. Very little soil movement. We've got a lot of conservation dollars going through our natural resource districts, going through CSP or DEPA programs, or CSC, to get cover from the ground for erosion control. Now, you guys are a lot flatter here. Soil health, we want to get system. When it comes to soil health, again, from a friend of mine, Ralph Kirch, down in uh, Paraguay, this is what long term no till soil looks like. I always looked at this and I said, oh, I wish we had soil like that. Uh, last time I was at this meeting a few years ago, Dave Grant was my chauffeur. I had an opportunity to go out in his field beer here in the first week of March, dug up some soil, long term no till with covers, it looks like that. Cuts off the tiles, fade light. Shell corn almost. Again, good soil beds and aggregates, what we can do. We get from Ralph Durb. She says, This is what no soil looks like after planting. A lot of people say, well, I can't get all that residue. If you don't have knowledge of activity, yes, that can be gone to. See that tree in the background of the circle? That's the same tree. A few weeks later, I looked at that. The beans look nice, but where's the residue going? Soil biology is digesting. And that's what you want to do is digest that residue of the next crop that's growing. And that's what soil health will do. That's what cover crops will do for you to get them going. Now, a lot of people look at cover crops and planting green. No more square. That residue will be digested later, though, when that's the crop, the cash crop that's growing, it's going to need the carbon dioxide come up in the canopy, makes it more water efficient. So, again, we think about digesting residue when the next crop is growing. Now, I got back to Nebraska and I told one of our extension educators about it. This is about uh, 10 years ago. We are in a field that had been massively chilled for years. It was on a seed corn uh, farm. Uh, they couldn't it sell seed corn, a new company. But this is where the plot area was where they did tillage. Every time there was a flush of weeds, they had these plots here tilled on around them again. And then they gave us the entire area for us to do some demonstrations for a four year grant they gave us. There was next to no soil structure there. I went out there and used the deep river to get rid of their disc pad because, like I said, they've been telling them every time they had weeds on them. So they got done doing that, planted the cereal rye cover up. So the cereal rye, you get a fiber screw in there. A lot of people think about a tap root. The tap root I use with steel. I use a fiber screw to build soil structure. Well, here was corn that had been tilled, did this cover, then it did corn, don't tell them to that. Another cover. Go to a point of that. Another cover. This is the fourth year plant into that fourth cover. When we look at biology in the field, we actually had six turns of biology, three sets of covers in there. This is irrigated corn on corn, and irrigation with corn on corn with no soil biology, you get a lot of residue starting to build up. Our extension educators look in there wondering, is it going to work? See, I had an extra waste that little pine, it wasn't heavy enough. This is Dale Flowerday, one of our noted. Economists in Nebraska stand there wondering, where's all that fire residue? Where's the irrigated corn on corn residue? It was amazing how just in three short years, three covers, we stepped up the biology that much. We had the irrigation, so we had the water, we had the soil biology of two carbon crops. We could buy nitrogen, we didn't put any nitrogen in the water, so buy the carbon. So again, we've got to think about what we're doing with the covers. And I get the call all the time, I'm going to find a cover crop, what do I do? And I go, why are you going to find a cover crop? If their answer is because I get paid to do it, they have a lot of it. You should do it, like Rodney says, because it pays you to do it. 
Dr. Listy from Nebraska, we've got erosion control out there. You guys have something else up there, and like I say, I can spend a whole hour to discuss that list, which one I'm planning. But when it comes down to it, you need to know what you want to accomplish the work that you decide to plan. I put grazing down on the list. We've got a lot of guys who want to graze their cows. To me, it's their forage crop if you're going to graze them. I'm going to do a higher seeding rate like more plants out there. There's a fertilizer out there, get more growth out there. They're expected to use more water, get more growth. You guys have more water, we the rest of the area not. And so again, for me, grazing is the pull on the list. And those other reasons in between there is a lot of reasons why we hear about it, that's what you've been hearing about in this conference. But again, what about on the list? Wildlife buffer. This is something I'm not familiar with. This is all the research from. We've got a researcher there, he's got plots, so he's got four acres of plots and six reps, he's got grass around each rep. So he's got easy access to his plots. No edge ropes, anything. See the trees in the background. Creek down there, a lot of deer live down there. They come up across the field and they get up that corn and they can stand there and they can see any predator coming and start munching on the corn. They were spending $10,000 a year, roughly, backpack sprayer, capsaicin pepper spray, spraying the over effect of the corn once a week just to make it bitter enough the deer would not eat it. Every time it rained, they had to spray it again. I told them to plant one 15 foot pass of sun gun. They go, why? I said, it's like candy to deer. They come up out of there, eat that, and they quit going toward the corn. I did it again the second year. The third year, I asked them if I should plant a sun hit for them. They said, well, I'll be aggravated deer damage for a couple of years. <laughs> sun hit grows straight up until the deer munches it off. Then it branches from each accelerated bud down below. Then it branches and that gets bled a bit off. I got some look like trees. That's some hand. Excellent deer crop. How's that going? Spreadsheet, what do you take it to the banker? So why not a production? The boy protected my crop and saved him $10,000 a year in labor and everything else. So here, here's a little 30 foot strip of it. Cut snow. It's an upright, high carbon that hangs around a long time. It's a lagoon. It fixes nitrogen as well. Now, the rest of the snow is gone. That still had snow in it. This is a picture taken in March a couple years ago. Here's one at uh, Green Cover Seeds, a cover crop seed vendor in Nebraska. That's something next to flats. Again, another high limit one that hang around a long time. This is another fall field day that was probably in the wheat stubble. So this is after frost killed it. I went back the next spring to see how well it held up in the winter. Here, very run with corn. The strip is still there. Again, it's a hand, it's a rope. If you run a residue mover up front, it'll wrap, it'll wrap tight. You can use the cutting torch to get it out of those wheels. You take them off, it works fine. And again, some different things I've observed in Nebraska and some things I haven't heard mention too much here is what I'm sharing with you. But again, if you don't know what you want to do, how can you select it? And once you select it, can you grow up? You know, the sun hand. To get the growth, we showed there, you might have to meat harvest. After corn bean harvest, it's way too late. It's the warm season we go. Can you manage it? Can you get it terminated? And Ronnie gives me excellent examples on how do you terminate things. Uh, will it affect the next crop? Send him no problem. What if I had some wheat? You can hold a load of wheat to the elevator, and after you serve your head scan in it, they rejected it. He's sitting there next to you and said, wheat, cool season grass, cover crop, in front of my soybeans next year. I'll plan it. I'll be able to fix it a dollar. That's a cheap cover crop seed for you. You bought some, you're going to buy corn into it. Conserve your head scab, conserve your stock crop and corn. Oops. Again, we'll affect the next crop. Another one, sunflowers. Head pulled on sunflowers, white pulled on soybeans. Don't put sunflowers on something you're going to plant soybeans next year. you got to know some of these interactions. It gets a little more complex when you start looking at some of these mixes when you're throwing in a dozen things. What would the seed cost? To me, the cheapest seed is the leftover seed in the seed shed. After wheat harvest, that's where all my leftover corn, milo, and soybean seed goes into the drill. Because after wheat harvest, they're going to frost off anyway. It's a cheap cover crop. Or it can be almost anywhere. And my economy says it doesn't have to be full rate. You can go to reduce the cost of rates. Well, help the soil system, that's what I'm after as well. Grasses, grow your residue. Reduce, fix nitrogen. The key, though, is make sure you have the right inoculant for the lagoon you're growing. Just because you've been raising soybeans for years and you don't worry about inoculating your soybeans, it doesn't mean it's the right grain or azobia 
to do peace or bitch or alfalfa or whatever your cover is. Make sure you got the right back. Others may say, oh, Brunson, I'm sorry. A lot of people talk about the roots, getting rid of compaction. It is a good tapper to do that. The grass is might be an oversold a little bit for that. I look at more for resin cycle. They are really efficient at taking up residual nutrients so they don't get lost to be bleaching more to out the range tile. Throw it up in biology before we keep it. The other is that's going to be the biodiversity. It's going to be the pollinators. It's going to be my flax like plants, the sunflowers, sunflowers, the blooming plants. To get some flowers out there. Again, CSP bonus points to do pollinators. Goes in versus warm season seven says whatever your cash crop is, you do the opposite for the cover crop. Grass versus broadleaf. If I'm early in the no-till system, I have too much residue there, we'll do the broadleafs to get more nitrogen out there to break the residue down. For me, I don't do a lot of broadleafs or a lot of legumes because I need more carbon. My digestion of the soil system is taking care of it for me. Cocktails, mix them together to get all the benefits. I do a lot of different things. Key places. If you've got low residue out there, grow some residue. If you've got early harvest, we heard corn silage mentioned in the previous presentation. If I've got wheat, remember harvest, seed corn harvest, I got more growing time to do cover crops. You gotta keep in mind your growing time too on what are you selecting. For instance, I've uh, heard about radishes and oats. For me, for radishes after corn and bean harvest, I'm north of Interstate 80. I think when a meat harvest comes off so late that radishes will be a waste of time. It's interesting to set me inside. It's a little greater. It depends where you're at, how much growing time you get. Uh, when most of our covers we grow, we tend to look at a minimum of 30 days before 60 days of growth to do much good. And so, again, what are you going to select? Cover crops on soils that receive more than you can store. That's a lot of your soils. So there's water going out the range tile, why not grow it into something? For me, it might be a sandy soil because sand. Sand might only hold in the top foot of soil, might only hold an inch of animal water. Four foot of soil holds only four inches of water. If harvest on that sandy soil, which I'll find in my next crop next spring is more than four inches, your soil moisture will be lost to deep bleaching because the sand can't hold it. We get yield responses on our sands more often simply because we get protected. Again, we look at different crops, you know, no more corn soybeans. Uh, the one that we've been missing a long time is when it cools since we're We've got a lot of guys in Nebraska now that are doing peas. 4 inch peas for livestock or food grade peas for an extra price bonus. We've got pea buyers now set up. And if you get a split, they're even worth a lot more. When you start selling peas at $25 a bushel, you don't raise soybeans anymore, you get about the same. They come off a lot sooner, so you get time to put in cover crops. But again, when it comes to crop type, that's a cool season raw leaf, wheat's a cool season grass, soybeans and corn, well, warm season raw leaf and grass. Look for different crop types when it comes to getting your soil in better condition. As you're doing that, maybe you can't grow one of those as a crop, grow it as the cover. And then the cool season uh, oats and rye. Rye we talked about on others. We're looking at cool season in a warm season mix. So think about that. Livestock gives you some options. Those options are much bigger when you have an early harvest like peas or uh, wheat or something like that because you have time to grow the cover. But again, to me, that's different than it's an orange crop or a grazing crop. I'm going to spend a little bit more money on it because I'm going to get a little money back. If I don't have the livestock, it's like I showed this morning, it's kind of there to grow some carbon, go ahead and plant down through. And we can do that. Again, playing in Nebraska, uh, I like the Crestbuster growth because it leaves a lot of the residue standing. About 200, 210 bushel corn as you have harvest out there seeding. Um, Austrian winter peas is covered up. I'll plant them a little bit later. I plant them deep. March 15th on a warm spring, that's what the Austrian winter peas look like. April 15th, they're up knee high, blooming, fixing a lot of in. I was really excited. April 17th, we had Easter frost that killed every one of them. That's all right, I was going to spray them out corn anyway. They fixed like 100 pounds in. I thought that was great. On a cool spring, they don't grow much. How much in will they fix? I don't know. In the fall, I do a lot of mixes in my corn and bean residue, look at a cool season broadly for the grass, mustard green peas, and cereal rye. It's too late for me to put in radish or something like that, so I'm going to keep it simple. In the fall, it looks like this. They get up. In the spring, you go out there, the rye is just breaking dormancy, and the peas are frosted off and say, darn, they didn't survive the winter. If you fly them on, if you drop them in from a high boy, I guarantee you will not survive the winter. But like a soybean, they didn't seed the ground, and every node that's below the soil surface sets up a new branch. 
That's my hand. You can see it was down below. I don't know, about four inches deep. And you can see there, there's three branches coming off that. The most I found is five. That was the one you just saw earlier that looked frosted off. Now, a little seeding ring gives me five plants coming up. The roots are there. At that size, in the middle of April, this is a cool spring. When the previous spring, I had this tall in the middle of April. Still had that many nodules on there. It's doing something for me. It's feeding soil biology. Does it fix a lot of you? Maybe, maybe not. I don't reduce my end rates because I'm building soil. I'm actually increasing end rates because I'm increasing yields. After we plenty of time for cover crops, uh, we plant all of our wheat acres to cover crops. That's already seeded. We have a Christmas grill that's on the residue standing. I like a 14 way mix. People say 14 way. Yeah, I'll put in our two cool season grasses, two warm season grasses, two cool season growlings, two warm season growlings, two grasses, two flowering plants, and then whatever leftover seed I got left in the seed ship. So that's two, multiply that, that's, that's 14 different grains. Now, my warm season grasses in the heat of the summer take off growing right away, the warm season growlings take off growing right away, and hold the cool season back. Then, when the first frost hits, they stop growing. The cool season take over. And I select things that all winter kill because I've been in a 27 inch rainfall area. Next spring, they come in and plant. It's relatively easy and clean to find into that. But I had the diversity there. I had different things growing at different times. I had different things using water at different times. And again, when all winter kills, next spring, all my precepts save for my cash crop. Playing with research then. That's what the 14 way mix looks like. You can see some flowers in there, you can see some grass, you can see some raw leaves. The big leafed one in front here, oops, oh, don't hit that one. The big leafed one in front there, okra. It has a stem that will kind of last a long time in the spring and plant enough to be harvested, you can pick okra in the fall. But again, just different things out there for different purposes. I played with legume mixes. This is a six way legume, three cool season, three warm season. I got some uh, common veg there because that winter kills for us. I don't use hairy veg there because I don't have to worry about spraying out in the spring. I'm using hairy winter kills. And what's something like that coming up? It's not much of a stand. That can fix a lot of nitrogen because there's living roots there feeding the soil system. Grass mix. I got a refrigerator bag that's thrown over the inlets of the drills. Take my seven and a half inch drill, convert it to 15. I was too lazy to try to do all the sprockets to get a reduced rate for seeding. And that's German foxtail millet, uh, some VOR uh, flint corn, and some leftover sorghum seed. And looks like that growing. 15 inch rows. Again, my drill left all the residue standing to catch snow for the winter after this frost kills. But I'm growing a bunch more carbon there. Now you look at that and you say that stuff looks a little wrinkled and dry there. That was in 2012, the drought year. Wheat harvest already took a yield hit some because of the drought. I seeded the cover that day. The cover grew with what moisture is there. And a lot of people say there's not enough moisture. The most moisture you have is the day the combine leaves the field. Because when the crop matured, it quit using moisture. All the moisture from maturity until harvest is sitting right there. You plant that day. If you wait two weeks, that moisture dries out, you plant the cover, and you won't have a cover. If you're old enough, or your grandpa may tell you, when did they plow wheat stubble? When they still had wheat in the rotation. They plowed it the day they come out of the field. What if they waited a month to plow it? It was so dry, they turned the big boulders and rocks. The same thing's true with the covers. The day the combine is the field, but the seed in the ground, even in a drought year, I'm growing cover. My cheapest cover. Been run soybeans, been run marley. This is the project started in 2005 before everybody's talking cocktails. Milo is a carbon, soybeans is a nitrogen. And then it's carbon, nitrogen, and no cover in the wheat stubble. And after I'm corning that, after corn harvest, I already showed you the cereal rise most of winter beans, carbon versus nitrogen, in the same strips. After soybean harvest, I plant wheat immediately. So a base rotation corn, bean, wheat is two carbons, one nitrogen. Or I'm adding two more carbons, cereal rye and grain sorghum or two more nitrogens, soybeans and also winter beans. And just to see what it does for soil health. It does enough differences that on a PLFA test, which is usually your soil biology, Jill Clark can be tumble apart. She gave us seven of the nine right just looking at the soil test. As far as the crop growing, 
I don't know. Say 2005. This uh, has been going ever since. I like those two because they frost kill. The beans are actually left over bean seed for me. The Milo is a big run grain sorghum. Big run grain sorghum depends upon the year, sells for $3 to $5 a bushel. You see them at the rate of 5 to 10 pounds per acre. Do the math. It's 35 cents an acre for my cover crop seed. Grows some carbon. Cerno Rye, cool spring, not much growth there. I showed this slide this morning. That's without cover on the right side, with cover on the left side. Fed the soil volume, digested residue. It is no till corn soil you do irritation for more than 20 years. Cerno Rye, they step the biology cut and throw it in the covers. On the beans, I let it grow a little longer to get more carbon biomass produced. Actually, check with the crop insurance. RMA and Nebraska will not let me do this. We came out. And plant green, unless you're a no-tiller, continuous no-tiller, you can plant green, which you got to spray it out within seven days. You can't wait for your first shot of Roundup like I do. This increases my bean yield for me because it gives me more carbon biomass there, keeps the sun moving off those beans. Stunts them a little early, that means there's less vegetative factor to keep cool and hydrated in the heat of the summer, more moisture goes to the pod field. That's what my yields for me. In fact, my long term tillage plots I talked about this morning. In 2007, I took out two of the treatments. I had no till with coloration, I had single disc treatment. I changed those to double disc with covers and no till with covers. Because then I had covers with and without tillage. For comparison, a lot of that cereal right, I killed about this growth stage. I'm not raising a lot of biomass, I'm just feeding the soil. And again, at warm spring, I'll get that much back up. On a cool spring, I don't get that much. Now, how do you know what next spring is going to be like? I don't know. Remember, I had early planting days. I only planted by May 1, so I terminated early. But again, here's the fall chisel on the right. No till with covers on the left. So, biology can digest my residue better than tillage does. Heard about some aerial seeding, things like that. I'll just show a couple of Nebraska pictures. We've got an NRD in Nebraska, Natural Resources District, that pays the aerial seeding because of erosion control. The slopes are like that. On um, irrigated corn, no brainer. Get it out there, rain gets it up. For you guys, rainfall could be a no brainer. You should have rain to get it up. I say should. On dry land, this is dry land, sandy field. Fluid on, nice stand there. That extra residue in the sand kept the sand cooler next year, kept the sun and wind off of it. And this farmer ran strips, and it's worth about 23 bushel per acre more corn where he had the cover on. Paid for that seed real fast. Well, NRD already paid for it. This one did get the rain. It got snow before it got much covered up there. And again, with area application, I toss a coin, like Rodney says, some years it worked great, some years it doesn't. I'd rather put the seed in the ground itself. Rather than hiring an airplane, this guy just took an iClarence spreader out there when the leaves are just starting to yellow. Get the seed in the ground, but the leaves mulch and so it grows. You go earlier than that, you don't get the sunlight. You go later than that, you get too many seed from the ground. Leaves themselves. For corn, aerial or like this doesn't work if you don't get enough to the soil surface. That's why you guys are building drops. I had no one yet to play with it yet. Now, the NRD with the airplane. The airplane sounds good, except they have to go back to the airport to refill. This NRD had 40 acres per producer. They're doing a mix that was a one ton tow to do the 40 acres. They're doing 50 pounds per acre and had a lot of stuff in their mix. They started Monday morning taking a flatbed trailer with all these toads and put them around all these different fields. Tuesday morning, they finished putting them out in all the fields. Helicopter shows up Tuesday noon. Never had to go back to the airport. In fact, they never landed. He hovered, put the cedar down, they dumped the seed in, he was back in the field in just a few, not even a minute or two. He did 1,300 acres one afternoon. I didn't like that. And again, get together some neighbors and consider something like this. That's what they do. Their stands, it depends what they had in the mix. Some years it looked good, other years it didn't. They're still doing it, though. They've been doing it over 10 years because of the erosion control potential. They're using public money to control erosion. The farmers are benefiting from better soils. So again, we're going to see that from some of our general key public. Sea corn in production in Nebraska. That's the one place we will get standing corn. Uh, he's lowered the spreader there to refill it. Normally runs up above the female big reds. Behind the wheel there, just barely hiding. 
There's a Roman stock chopper there. It's called a mail row destroyer. As they're knocking out the male row, because they don't want it anymore, it uses water, takes away from the female, they're actually seeding the cover crop. As that corn is near maturity, the cover is coming on. When the corn is harvested, the cover is there. They throw a lot of brassicas in there because the brassicas help dissolve the corn residue to get rid of any potential pathogens on those weak embryos. Also, they do that for leaf material because they graze it to pick up any down leaves. Grazing is a little different purpose. But the main thing is hybrid seed corn production is over fertilized and over watered because it's such a high value crop. Until they started putting these covers in to catch all that, we had a lot of nitrate moving to the groundwater with the fall pretty soon because the soil profile was already full. Now, from the drainage top, we go out the drainage top, put it in a biological form, keep it for next year's crop. We got some guys doing fall fertilizer, seed and cover at the same time. Now, this guy is actually set up, he wanted the air seeder. The big tractor can pull it so he can do a few, rows, a few acres of narrow row beans. He says, I can't justify it. When he found out he put out an anhydrous with it, that's his fertilizer applicator for all his corn. That was his cover crop seeder for all his acres. That was doing custom work as well. Tanks there for ammonium sulfate, 1034O, complete fertilizer package and cover crop package, or growing wheat seed and seed wheat, leave the covers out. Again, start thinking about flexibility. Go to southwest Nebraska. A lot of guys are spent 1152 over fall, they got seed mixed in with it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, southwest Iowa, where they get more rainfall. In southwest Nebraska, you wouldn't have enough rainfall to get that up. It'd be a wasted trip as far as the cover is concerned. The Sierra Rye surface spread like that with the fertilizer because you're making a trip anyway. It's a no brainer for them. So, again, think of some other options. Livestock manure, we see some uh, states like Pennsylvania and Michigan really do a lot of work incorporating the slurry manure. We don't have much slurry manure, not that way. We got a lot of beef manure. But you know what? That spreads out and it chokes out in the field. You can't spread cover crop seed with that. But what a lot of guys are doing, they're out there just sitting the curl on it or something, seeding the cover, using the drills to smooth that out. And they're doing that to grow something biologically. And actually, the Del Marlboro Peninsula, out near Washington, D.C., they're doing a lot of work like this to stabilize the nutrients in the manure so it doesn't wash off into the, into the ocean. And so, again, think about growing your nutrients into a biological form rather than just leaving them laying there. This guy was just uh, 35 tons of feedlot manure, a little bit of radish, a little bit of rapeseed, a little bit of soybeans, and smokes. Get some growth. This morning I talked about never leave the soil dead, grow something, I prevented planting or hail out or flooded out. And again, this morning I said there's a big yield benefit there, just feeding the soil system. I saw that, I said, I'm going to try it. I went to the live soil, I planted oats in the spring, corn just got planted, you can see where the corn planter marks are, and I got 15 foot wide strips there. Guess what? Cool season grass taken off and use nitrogen before the warm season grass can get to it. Oops. Same thing, if you've got a high carbon cover crop, it can use nitrogen faster than your cash crop and get to it. You might need more starter nitrogen next to that crop. The nitrogen management thing is something you've got to look at as well. This is, uh, there's three pots here, one right up front, one way back, one off the back corner. One is wheat, one's triticale, one's a cereal rock. Went out there and we planted out of these little demonstration plots. And the first 10 feet, they're all soybean raising. The first 10 feet, we didn't see any cover. Then we planted the next 40. The next 10, we sprayed out a month before planting corn, two weeks before planting corn, the day of planting corn. And that's when you see the stair step of growth there. And the last 10 feet, we took the residue off the day we planted the corn. Now, a lot of pot, people say sewer rye is a little pathic to germinate your corn. Now the research is showing that the cereal rye nitrogen high up because the high carbon cover is holding the corn back. If you look real close next to the corn row, about four inches to the side, there's a little cleaver mark there. We got a starter attachment, we put down 50 pounds of starter next to the corn row, and regardless of where you're at there, the corn looks fine. But in person, the picture doesn't do it justice. So again, nitrogen management is important when it comes to the high carbon cover crops. I used to bring a lot of covers out early. But if it rubs there in the off season, I'm not trying to produce a bunch of carbon biomass. Again, we've got tillage. Tillage will offset the advantage of the cover. We've got some guys, especially organic producers, who grow covers, then they till them in. Well, when they do that, they're destroying some of the soil biology, so I don't like to do tillage, I'd rather just spray them out. Or perhaps roll them out. If they're in vegetative state, or maybe not. If they're reproductive state, roll works fine. Single species, it works fine. Multiple species mixed, 
Are they all in rower stage at the same time? The odds are they aren't. But again, row down this too. Rower on the front, planner in the back. Very control. For my friend Ralph Birch from South America, that's black boats rolled down, no herbicide in that field. That's great weed control. Again, I can get excited about that. Here is 20 pounds per acre, 40 pounds per acre of barley. Barley's a nice salt tolerant crop. We've got some seeds, a good cover crop. Look between the two drill passes, mare's tail. 20 pound rate, you see one or two, but 40 pound rate, you don't see eight. We have guys getting rid of mare's tail, other winter annual weeds, simply because they're growing heavily. Remember, if you don't have something there, Mother Nature will put something there. Here's cover crop plots. They plug one open in the drill. Every pass they make, they got a comparison of how well does that cover suppress the weeds. That's common oats. Look at one row that's missing. How many weeds would have been there? Remember my plots? 2016, I got a new bonus. That grain sorghum versus the soybeans. Went out there, nibble paper, time to put down early pre plant herbicide. Which one had the volunteer weed? The one without cover. I could have saved one herbicide application right there. Just because the cover suppressed the volunteer weed. And that was a winter killed cover. It wasn't even grown in the spring. End of, <coughs> end of May, time to make a post emergency decision. Grain syrup on the right, no cover on the left. I could have saved a second trip at the post emerge because the cover was there. And again, when people are concerned, how much yield did it hurt you? It saved you two trips this rare for 35 cents worth an acre of seed. That's hard to beat. Near maturity, corn looks a little yellow, the carbon tied up some nitrogen, guys. And no weeds. The no cover weeds greener because there's no nitrogen tie up from the carbon. And it did hurt me some because I fertilized 170 pounds of hemp into wheat stubble that should give you about 170 bushel corn um, for bushel in wheat stubble, high carbon stubble. I had more carbon there. Well, in a good year, uh, 166 with the cover 175, with the good cover 179. A year like that pays for the cover. 2012, the drought year, kind of really burden. The year after the drought, cover helped a little bit. 2014, I won't mention, but 2015, look at the yields. 197, 202, 214. We had a lot of rain. 15, the extra nitrogen grown from that soybeans and the feed stuff, okay. 2016, we cut our nitrogen rate. The carbon hurt me, but the nitrogen cover helped me. 170 pounds, we put on 16, and 15, we put on 170 pounds. Why the difference? I don't know. This year, we put on 200 pounds. I don't want to get caught in here. Again, a lot of people say, I can't grow the cover, I don't have the water. They let weeds grow, they're using the water, they go to seed. They remove the residue, there's bales of that. I hear a lot of people who say, I can't grow the cover, and they do everything else contrary to solar health and solar water.